Hi folks, welcome back. So I knew I had to read and cover this paper the minute I saw its title. This is from the 2021 conference on compiler construction. And the problem they tackle here is a very domain specific language for, as the title says, the French tax code. The amazing thing is that the French government department that handles taxes, the French public finances directorate has an algorithm that computes the tax bills of individuals. Taxpayers log on to the system, they fill out some forms, and the system tells them how much taxes they owe. So the whole thing is fully automated. The tax code is specified in a domain-specific language called M, which lets you write rules with declarations and variables and computations on those variables and M compiles down to C. The problem is that M is not Turing complete. It doesn't have loops, for example. And some recent additions to the tax law have needed to specify logic that was not expressible in M. So what the department did was write that logic directly in C and link that against the C produced by the M compiler. And while most of the M code is available for French citizens to examine and understand their tax rules, the C code is not public because of the fear that it's not secure enough and might get exploited. The main problem the authors are trying to solve in this paper is to build a new domain-specific language, which they call M+, which is very similar to M, but adds a few additional constructs so that you don't have to write these additional rules in C. But in addition to specifying this new language, they also want to prove it correct in the sense of specifying a formal semantics for it and proving its type safety. And when they do this, they're able to bring to bear a lot of the machinery of a modern compiler toolchain to bear on not just generating code for this language, but also optimizing the generated code. So overall, this paper is a great demonstration of how you can design a small domain-specific language for a specific real-world problem, build a compiler for it, and also deal with all the real world issues that come up like testing or even generating tests. So let's take a quick look at this language. The M language basically consists of declarations and rules. And declarations are basically variable declarations and exception declarations. And rules capture computations based on these variables. To take a very simple example, this expression computes the tax break that a household gets depending on the number of children in the household. As you can see, it's a more or less straightforward computation on the input variables, children count, and a few others. I'm not quite sure what's happening with this plus zero over here. But if is pretty much the most complex flow control available in the M language. There are no loops. It's not a Turing complete language. So the authors go on to describe a formal syntax and semantics of the M language. And they go on to prove type safety in the Koch theorem prover. This is nice because the existing M language did not have a formally specified semantics that was automatically verified. The authors then go on to add to the M language, and they call this new language M++, to obviate the need for writing extensions in C because the M language was not Turing complete. What they basically needed to do was call the same M rules with different variable values. And that's basically what M++ adds on top of M. And they add these two new constructs that they call partition, and this arrow operator to make a call to a rule. And very briefly, this partition operator checks that this variable is defined. And this arrow call operator makes it so that only these five variables are retained from executing the rule and the rest are discarded. So with just this small addition, they are able to encode all the tax rules and don't need to write extended code in C anymore. 
They call their compiler mlang and it basically takes an m code base as well as m++ files as input and the compiler compiles it to either Python or C. They also have an interpreter mode. The compiler is implemented in a camel in around 9000 lines of code so that's pretty manageable. The structure of the compiler is pretty much in line with the pipeline kind of architecture that most modern compilers have. You take your source files, you parse them into abstract syntax trees, and then compile them into an intermediate representation. And then as your compiler keeps chewing away at it, you go down to lower level intermediate representations. They have one that they call a backend intermediate representation, and then they compile it down to an optimized intermediate representation. And from that, they finally generate their output code, which could be either Python or C. And one of the big benefits of structuring it in this pipeline compiler fashion is that you can bring to bear the full range of compiler optimizations. Things like code elimination, inlining, partial evaluation, these are all standard textbook compiler optimizations. And what they found was once you do all these optimizations, the generated code shrinks by a factor of about six and a half. So by modernizing this entire compiler tool chain for this domain specific language, they not only get faster, better performing code, but as we'll see, they are able to do a few things that increase the confidence of the results of this tax computation. One thing they were able to do was swap out the standard IEEE floating point computations with more precise floating point libraries. In fact, they even experimented with using integers for the fractional part. And by doing all these experiments, they were able to determine that using the regular IEEE floating point computations doesn't really affect the accuracy of the results. The other thing they were able to do as a result of this was to use infrastructure to automatically generate tests so that they can get good coverage of all this logic and gain confidence in their computation. They explored randomly generating tests, but then they also leveraged a fuzzing infrastructure tool to generate more tests. Note that since the language doesn't really have a lot of control flow or loops, you're not so much concerned with exercising every branch, but you're more concerned with exercising the range of values that input variables can take. As they show over here with their fuzzer generated tests, they were able to get about an 88% coverage of their input space. They close with some general thoughts on using programming languages to formally encode the law. It looks like there have been lots of previous attempts at this, and I can understand how this would appeal to programmers and technical folks. However, what they have found is that there is no silver bullet and that it is extremely hard to encode law into a formal, rigorous model. As they show in this paper, if you take one very specific domain of the law, in this case it was taxes, but people have also had some success with things like contracts, then you might be more successful in encoding the law into some sort of a formal executable framework. So that was a look at a paper that takes the French tax code implementation, which was already automated, but modernizes the language and the infrastructure for doing so by using modern compiler construction techniques. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.